Hey guys, welcome to Quinn's Tree Farm, coming to you straight through the power of YouTube, right from a very hot Cornville, Maine. Uh, July has hit and we are in the midst of a heat wave. It's supposed to be in the 90s until Sunday and I thought that it would be a good opportunity to uh, take my farmer hat off and put on my paramedic hat, except that I don't really wear a paramedic hat, so I'm just going to put my farmer hat back on. Before I get started, quick disclaimer. I'm just sharing this information with you because I think it's important to get out. Uh, I am not representing anybody but myself and I encourage you to do your own research when it comes to this sort of thing. The last thing I want is somebody to sit there and say, well, Matt said on YouTube and, uh, you know, we get into a bind. With all that being said, uh, the research that I've done, uh, all my research comes from reputable places, uh, the Mayo Clinic, the CDC, and my main EMS protocols for what we would, how we would handle a heat emergency in the state of Maine. That's right, we're talking about heat emergencies today. Pretty good topic. Let's delve right into it. Why are heat emergencies going to be a problem for us tree farmers? What are we doing right now? We're out in the middle of the fields, shearing trees, mowing, and doing everything tree related in the middle of this heat. If left untreated, certain types of heat emergencies, specifically a heat stroke, uh, could be fatal. I do want to stress the importance of taking these emergencies seriously. This isn't a time to be a tough guy or to be stubborn. I understand that that's very difficult for a lot of us to do, uh, to admit that uh, we pushed it a little bit too far and we need a break or we need to go get help. But the quicker that we recognize that we have a problem and get ourselves back to normal, the quicker that we can get out into the field and uh, get back to work. These types of emergencies are gonna happen right now during the dog days of summer. That's when it's uh, the hottest. That's when the sun's beating down on you. And they're most likely to occur in these environments where it's hot, it's humid, and we're outside for long periods of time doing uh, intensive labor. All right, let's talk about prevention first, right? Uh, if we can prevent these heat-related emergencies from happening, and there's really three of them that we're gonna talk about today, sunburn, heat exhaustion and heat stroke. If we can prevent those from happening by taking a few simple steps, then we can be that much more efficient in the field. We can get in and we can get out as uh, quickly as possible and be hitting the couch and, and watching the TV or, or doing whatever it is you do when you're not working. What can we do for prevention? Well, the first thing is, is we want to wear proper clothing loose t-shirt, polo shirt, light fitting, light colored clothes. I wouldn't recommend jeans. If you wanna wear long pants, and I know most of us do when we're out in the field, khakis uh, or something loose like that, a hat. A hat is always important uh, because it acts as a nice block. Uh, I personally like my straw hat. Uh, the reason I like my straw hat is because it's light, air can pass through it uh, and it gives me a visor to keep my face protected from the sun that protects me from uh, specifically that protects me from sunburn as well as those direct sunlight rays hitting my body and, and causing myself to heat and that brings me to my next topic siesta siesta is a thing and it's a really important thing and if you can get away with taking a break during the hottest hours of the day that's going to go miles at keeping you out of the hospital. When that sun's up in the air, the temperatures are at their hottest, do things inside. Get to yourself to an air conditioned room or work in a shady spot. We have the ability to start sharing as early as 5.30 in the morning because it's light out. Work from 6 to 9, 6 to 10 in the morning and then again in the evening. Uh, just like right now, I chose to, to film this video not in the hottest type of weather but after 7 o'clock at night when at least the sun rays are low, the air temperature might still be warm, but you're not getting baked by the sun rays. Drink plenty of fluid. I mean, drink plenty of fluid. That's right. Water, Gatorade, or other uh, electrolyte balanced sports drinks are more important. It doesn't mean drink alcohol. Stay away from the alcohol. Why? Alcohol is a diuretic. 
it's actually going to take this water and and flush it out uh, and make you want to urinate more and go to the bathroom more and that's bad because we want to keep ourselves hydrated so try to stay away from the cider good amount of water I like uh, mixing it either with the sports drinks because they're flavored or putting like a squirt drink in this like uh, like the Mio's and whatnot uh, but you, you definitely want to have a good gallon of water in you while you're working don't forget to wear sunscreen if it's really bright out wear sunglasses lastly if you are at an increased risk of a heat related emergency be aware of that specifically when it comes to the type of heat related emergency that we're going to talk about which is an exertional heat related emergency uh, people that are older than the age of 65 are going to be more at risk for uh, having a heat related emergency uh, mainly because their body already uh, is not as able to regulate their temperature as well as someone that's uh, younger and on the same token uh, young children are also more at risk for heat related emergencies so don't put your uh, toddlers out there sharing trees because that's just not a good idea the first heat related illness that I want to talk about is sunburn it's important to protect ourselves from sunburn for two reasons you have a much higher increased risk for skin cancer the more you tan the more you burn uh, the more your uh, risk for skin cancer goes up and none of us really want to have skin cancer uh, it's certainly no fun once you burn your skin uh, it's not going to be able to be utilized in cooling your body off and that's bad because the skin is a major organ in the cooling process right we lose so much of our heat out of our skin because it's the biggest amount of surface area uh, on the outside of our body that can allow heat to pass pass away pass off the body not to mention that it really hurts and you can't sleep when you have a sunburn so let's uh do things to prevent sunburn the biggest thing that we're going to do is wear sunscreen wear sunscreen sunscreen protects us from the sun's uv rays uh, obviously the spf of 15 or higher if we're going to be in the sun all day i'd recommend a, a higher much higher spf uh, if you sweat a lot or you're going swimming a lot make sure that you reapply wear appropriate clothing make sure you have a nice wide brimmed hat to protect your face and the sh and your shoulders and the rest of your body from that uv light so let's get into the next two heat related emergencies and they're a little bit more serious than a sunburn the first one the most common one is heat exhaustion Heat exhaustion occurs when you've depleted the fluids in your body to a point where you become exhausted or you become fatigued fast. And it's kind of a precursor to heat stroke and we'll get to that. So some symptoms, fatigue, dizziness, confusion, muscle cramps, maybe some muscle spasms, and you might feel nauseous like you want to throw up. Tachycardia or a fast heart rate, rapid pulse. You might toss your cookies. Or even worse, you might poop your cookies out a little bit early. So vomiting and diarrhea can be signs of heat exhaustion. One of the things you might see is pale skin and profuse sweating. So now that we know to recognize the signs of heat exhaustion, what can we do uh, if we find ourselves dealing with a bout of heat exhaustion? Well, the first thing is increase your fluid intake. Uh, replenish your your liquids that's why we're drinking the water out there get those liquids into your body uh, find a shady space take a break and get out of the elements and find a shady space under a tree or maybe get into your air-conditioned tractor or truck uh, or if you're lucky enough it's a great time to take a break and maybe go for a swim basically the goal is at this point to get your system back to a uh, more of a a baseline of 98.6 degrees before it's too late, before we get too hot and we do significant damage to our organs. Now let's talk about heat stroke. Heat stroke is the code red. Heat stroke is a true medical emergency. Uh, you need to call 911 immediately and get help. Get an ambulance to your location so we can get you to the hospital. Uh, heat stroke can be fatal and it can cause permanent damage to your organs. Heat stroke occurs when your body temperature is higher than 103 degrees Fahrenheit. What are the signs and symptoms of heat stroke? 
you're going to have a fast pulse. Uh, you might still be throwing up uh, and be nauseous and, and have diarrhea, but here's a couple of the big ones. It's possible that your skin color is not going to be pale, but it's going to be red and it's going to be quite flushed. You've lost the ability to sweat. You're not going to see someone with uh, uh, perspiration or, or soaking wet skin. They're going to be rather dry. You're going to see people with altered mental statuses. They're going to be confused. Uh, they could be dizzy and they could have seizures. So how do we attack heat stroke in the field? Well, the first thing we're going to do when I reiterate is we're going to call for help. We need to get this person to the hospital as quickly as possible. And the best way to do that is to call an ambulance. Initiate radical cooling. What is radical cooling? That is getting somebody into an ice bath or into a tub of cold water. You're going to potentially, uh, you, you need to get them as cool as possible, as quickly as possible. You're going to strip all their clothes off. You're going to get them out of the sun, into the shade. You're going to get, uh, get them cooled down. Uh, you're going to take, if you have ice packs or ice bath bags or cool washcloths, you're going to stick them in their armpits and their groins. And the reason why is that they're very vascular. You have a lot of vessels going uh, from your chest to your arms and, and from your torso and your abdomen down into your legs. We're going to do something called taco, and believe it or not, it's going to remind you of a taco. And that's called top assisted cooling with oscillation. And what top assisted cooling with oscillation is, and after saying that, you can understand why we call it taco. How does taco work? Well, you're going to have a top, and you need four or five people to do this. And you're going to take your patient, and you're going to put them on that top. top. And you're going to wrap them like a taco. You're going to have sides and everything. You're going to have people on the sides of this taco and you're going to put the patient in the taco and then you're going to fill the taco with ice cold water. And that's the, 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 that's the meat and the lettuce of the taco. You're going to take the taco and you're going to wrap, roll it back and forth and oscillate it gently. Uh, but you're trying to move that ice and that water around so that the cool water gets into where the patient is and that warm water can go back to the outside and cool down and come back in. This is especially helpful in exertional heat stroke, which is what we're going to be dealing with. The exertional heat stroke of an athlete or a laborer, a working athlete out in the field, is going to benefit from these radical cooling techniques. We need to get these patients to the hospital quickly and efficiently. So when the ambulance crew shows up, they're going to continue your cooling processes. They're going to start to rapidly cool the patient, get them in the back of the box, turn the air conditioner on. Again, continue to wet them down, get those hot clothes off, get him as cool or her as cool as possible. Uh, this is go probably gonna be one of those calls where I'm in the back saying, don't stop for the red lights and uh, turn your lights and siren on. And then we're going to uh, start IVs and run our diagnostics with an EKG and get a good set of vital signs. And we're going to get them to the hospital where we can continue to cool them with better tools and work to replenish uh, fluids and any electrolytes that the patient uh, may or may not have lost. So I hope this video helped. I know it's a lot of talking and a lot less action, but I think it's helpful uh, for you to be aware of these uh, types of emergencies that are in the field. It's really hot out here, but even though it's hot, you know I'd really rather feel bad in Maine than feel good anywhere else. So there I go, my friends. I'll see you soon, and take care of yourselves out there.